John Tully. They worked out the number of the locker, uh, I mean, uh, we did, uh, that is, uh, I did, by finding the rule. Rule? What rule? Well, the rule. Um, ho. For heaven's sakes, Q1, if you've got the number, what have you done about it? Well, Q5 and Q7 are at the factory now, keeping observation. Whoever has the uh, key to locker number 98 must be the factor. Supposing you arrest him, have you enough evidence against him? I shall make him talk. Make him talk? My methods never fail. Rick, look. She has the key, it must be. I beg your pardon? We'd like a word with you, Mrs. Miss Hartshorn. Matilda Hartshorn. Who are you? Security agents. Security? Oh, my goodness. We must ask you to come with us. With you? Oh, how exciting. Don't lie to me. You can't pull the wool over my eyes. I've been in this game too long. No, you can't have a cigarette. Wake up! There'll be no rest for you until you've told me the truth. The whole truth and nothing but the truth. In here. Very well. Oh. Good afternoon. I'm Matilda Hartshorn. I met these two charming young people at the factory and they brought me here. I'm afraid I lead rather a lonely life these days. That's why it's so nice to be here today. Nice. You know, I'm very fond of spy stories. Oh, I do envy you being secret agents. You must have such fun. Fun? We don't know the factor as a man, do we? I mean, nobody's ever seen him. Or her. Or her, except in disguise. The old lady went to the locker. And she took this from her bag. Ninety-eight. where I'm supposed to sit. Did you take this key from your handbag? Oh, yes, I did. Number 98. Oh, now, I thought it What was did a... you want from that locker? The salmon sandwiches. The what? For Mr. Hamble. He lives in the flat below mine. He works at the factory. But he was poorly today. He was very worried about the sandwiches he'd left in his locker yesterday. He was afraid the fish might go bad, so he gave me the key and I went to fetch them for him. Section M are checking the house. Hamble was seen leaving this morning soon after she did. He's not come back. So, he was poorly, was he? Oh, yes, poor lamb. He shouldn't have gone out. I do hope he wrapped up warmly. There were no sandwiches in the locker or anything else. Oh, yes! But you see... I've nothing more to say. Nothing, eh? We'll see about that. What do you know about a DD2X? DD2X? Let me think now. I'm awfully sorry, but I can't recall ever. Were you at the Selbats Hotel two weeks ago? Oh, I'm afraid I can't afford hotels. I only have my pension, you see, and a little money... Oh, keep to the point, Miss Hartshorn. Oh, do call me Matilda. Haven't you forgotten the light? The light? Oh, that. That's better. I can see that this is going to take a long time. So, you deny that you run a private spy network? You've never heard of Boris or the money he was supposed to leave in that locker. I do wish I could be more helpful. So what do you know, Matilda? You look quite worn out. Why don't you sit down for a while? Oh. <laughs> Is she an innocent old biddy? Or a very cunning spy. I'm certain she knows something she won't tell us. How can we make her talk? Suppose we take her at her word. 
Go along with her. Now tell me, what's your name? Hurst. Percival Hurst. And are you in charge of British security? No. no only Section Q. Lisa Wentworth is ahead of the... Dip Don't tell me more. Oh, I'll tell you anything. Anything you want to know. Oh, how wonderful. Where are we? This is the training centre run by Section T. Is this where you teach people to be secret agents? If you're an agent, Matilda, one of us, will you tell us everything you know? Oh, yes, of course I would. Where's Percival? Uh, Major Hurst isn't feeling very well. Oh. He's taking a rest. Dear, I do hope I'll meet him again later. Now, what do I have to do? Take a test on the reactor video. If you pass, you'll qualify for Section Q. I'll try my very best. <laughs> Stand by for test Q42 stroke 7. I shall initiate action now. There you see four telephone booths and three secret agents. F1 and F2 are friendly. E1 is an enemy agent. I understand. But why is that light going backwards and forth? That represents a surveillance camera. The point is that none of the agents wishes to be seen by the camera. Oh, no, of course not. That wouldn't do. They can only move when the camera's turned away from them, which doesn't give them much time. No, indeed. Why do they want to move? Because our friendly agents, F1 and F2, are expecting a call from a contact in B4. Oh, dear. And they're in 1 and 2. Exactly. So one of them, it doesn't matter which, must move to B4, and the other one should be in the next booth. B3. What about the enemy agent? E1 should be as far away from them as possible in B1. Yes, yes, I see. You have to move the agents about until you've got them in the right places. How do I move them? You can move an agent from one booth to the next while the surveillance camera is pointed away, providing the booth is empty. You mean I can move F2 to B3? Right. Oh, isn't that clever? Now I can move F1 to B2. Oh dear. What can I do now? Well, you can move one agent past another if there's an empty booth on the other side. Can I move E1 to B1? No, there's only time for E1 to cross one other agent, not two. Oh, that's awkward. But suppose I move F1 back into B1. Then I can move E1 to B2. And F2 into B1. Four and F1 into B3 and E1 to B1. Got it. Have I passed the test? I'm afraid not. You took seven moves. That's too many. You must swap the agents over in the fewest possible moves. Oh, dear. Please, may I try again? Can't you have another chance? Oh, very well. You ready? Yes. Yes, I think so. What's that? What's going on? Look. How did he get there? We don't know, but he's gone berserk. Come on, quickly. We'll be back in a moment. Two friendly matrons yeah. and one mm. enemy. Mm -hmm. Mm. Mm. Must Matilda make the grade to fox the factor? Can you qualify for Section Q? Arrange your agents. Take the test. And don't miss more riotous revelations in 